What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Puck U. I'm Mike Burns. I'm joined, as always, with NHL handicapper Les Victory. We're over here at Why Lose Sports. We got a lot to talk about. We got a recap Thursday, February 22nd, and we're going to get right into Friday, February 23rd. We're going to be talking about some NHL wagering. We're going to talk some leans, some likes. We're going to make you guys some money today. Les, how we doing, brother? We are doing a hell of a lot better than your New Jersey Devils are. Where the fuck were they tonight? My God, Nico Dawes, he had a whopping 13 saves tonight. 13. You got to dig right into me, right? Got to get right to it. Oh, man. Uh, I, you know, no, I took no out. No spit, no lube, sandpaper finish on me. All right, man. I fucking <laughs> deserve it. You do deserve it. That was terrible. Luke Hughes has been terrible the past couple games. Just, I, you know, I'm trying to pretend to like the Devils now because, you know, I get it. You, you, you're you just a good friend. I'm just trying to be supportive from like a friend perspective. Like, God, you know, you see the guy bleeding. You don't, you know, kick him in the ribs. You throw a Band-Aid at him. But you know what? No. This is not a the friend. Band-Aid. This is not a friend. <laughs> this is not a friend bolt uh, business here, buddy. No, it's not. I'm we kicking you in the, the ribs. Every single time. 100%. You got four fucking shots. You gave up four shots in the third. You gave up six in the second. You gave up eight in the first. And, and they you were lose all five goals. One. You lose 5-1. Like, and what, yeah, seriously. And the penalty, uh, the, the power play, like there's just so much going wrong in New Jersey right now. And, you know, I it's it's obviously too late to can Lindy Ruff. And I don't know if that's a, that, that'll solve the problem or not. You're not going to do that this cold, this deep into the. And if they do, they're basically suggesting they're they're done for the year and they're they're yep. they're then not start going to go anywhere, users. right? And then yeah, then it's 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 about 20, 24, 25. So yeah, okay, I'll I'll leave it at that. You know, I'm not anybody that watched that game. It wasn't a very good game to watch by the sounds of it, just because of the lack of option. But you know what? You got to give Shesterkin some credit, right? Like he saw 40 fucking shots tonight and you know, I don't know the quality of them. I didn't watch the game. You would know better than I am, but he's been really good lately. We, I mean, we, we peppered him. We just got no fucking finish, dude. You know, it was five, nothing. Yeah. Nice. Cool. You know, Hughes got a, a late goal, but I mean, I silver lining as far as this is concerned. I mean, you know, we did talk about Chris Kreider with an anytime goal. It wasn't on the power play. Like we were thinking it was going to, but Panarin with a nice dish across. So, we cashed out on that guy. Happy about him. Definitely. This is one of those games for New Jersey. They got to put it past them. They got to have like a in, in a player only meeting or something, uh, you know, and, and just try to figure out a way to move on here because uh, they, they aren't out of it. Asian pleasure. That's where they got to go. That's how they got to galvanize this team. They need to do something. And whatever they're doing now isn't working. So maybe it's time to stop using men and actually use women for once. <laughs> oh, you fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Moving on to the good stuff. We had a we had one that we had an eye on. We had a little, we had a, not a little, we had a big feeling about what was going down at Little Caesars Arena tonight. Yes, and that is an awesome story because we talked about it before. Uh, you know, Colorado winning 10, 10 games in a row against Detroit, leading back Who would to ever 2000. take Detroit with those stats? Who'd be out of their fucking mind taking Detroit? This guy, oh, this guy did, and we fucking nailed it. First time, uh, um, first time Detroit beating Colorado in seven years. Like, I was 27 back to last time when, when, when uh, Detroit. Beat that. I don't even know if I could remember anybody that was actually on that team. Fuck, is that like the Chris Osgood days? Like it's <laughs> but yeah, seriously. Needless to say, though, uh, I was really I watched most of this game and I really like the look of Detroit right now, man. Like they 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 really shut down Colorado and you know McKinnon was kind of handcuffed a lot of the times. They definitely played him a lot harder than you know. Most teams I find so I feel like their game plan was really targeting McKinnon to try to stop him because when you stop him, that whole offense just takes a big step back, right? So uh, I thought I thought Detroit did a great job, and we had uh, we had uh, Larkin at under two and a half shots, 
and he only had two. So that was a, a free bet that that cashed. And uh, we obviously hit the underdog for plus money. You gotta love that. And we were talking about it this uh, yesterday afternoon on here. A little Showtime Patty Kane anytime, anytime goal with the OT winner. Not too fucking bad Showtime. Good for him. And I, we were sitting at my, my wife and I were sitting watching the overtime. And I said, Patty Kane for the win, calling it right now. Sure enough, a few minutes later, uh, he buries it and, you know, gets us the dub. Last one to recap is the big dogs down in Carolina. Now, this guy ended with some fireworks. What do we have going on here? This is the matchup that we expected to see. We expected to see low scoring, which was on the card tonight. We put a 20x bet on the under. And, I mean, you couldn't get any lower than one nothing. So, I mean, we totally got the read on that one right. Uh, we expected a really tight game. I mean, there's been a lot of bad blood between these teams uh, because of the playoffs of the past couple of years and what's been going on. But Florida really took it to Carolina. Like, Florida outshot them 44-29. Like, you got to give Kachekov uh, some appreciation here. A 44-save shutout against one of the most offensive teams in the NHL. How does that even happen? How does that even happen? This is just one of those anomalies tonight that blows your mind. Well, th we're going to get right into tonight's games here, and th I don't think that there's a chicken dick's chance in hell that this is going to be an anomaly here. Uh, Winnipeg's walking into Chicago. Winnipeg at minus 275. Chicago at plus 225. The only thing that I can sell here to you, dude, and the Jets are 2-1 and one against Chicago this season, right? Uh, the one game that Chicago won was on uh, Bedard's first overtime winner of his career. They won two to one back in December. And that's really it. I got nothing else in Chicago's end here. Well, here's the thing. Um, Soderblom is looking like he's supposed to start. So Mrazek isn't. So that would, uh, you know, I would feel better if Mrazek was starting just because he's been excellent as far as i'm concerned given the team that's in front of them now with that being said when winnipeg is eight and two in the last 10 but the the stat that you know we're never we're never gonna bet this game at minus 275 we gotta there's we no either look point. there's no point and i'm not gonna offer my clients bets that pay no money so you know, you know that that kind of thing is off the table but what i am looking at is somewhere where there might be better odds for us to make money and still lose a game. So for example, like Chicago's plus one and a half at minus 115. Like that's almost even money to lose by one. And the funny thing with that is, is the over under on, on these two teams is two, seven and one. So these, these are low scoring games. So low scoring games could result in a one goal game, which is what we would be looking for. So the fact that, uh, you know, seven out of nine, I've, I've hit the under on this. And even this year, January 11th, Winnipeg wins 2-1, you know, it, I, in in Winnipeg. And then, like you said, Chicago wins 2-1, right? Mm -hmm. So they're close games. Uh, December 2nd, Winnipeg won 3-1. You know, I don't know if it was an empty netter or not. It would have busted the, my, uh, the plus one and a half anyway. But still, um, you know, it's something to consider when you're giving, you're getting, you're pretty much starting the game one nothing. And you're getting minus 115 odds to to take it, so it's not a it's it, it's not a bad spot to consider, and definitely the under to look at too. I mean, it's at five and a half right now. We'll see if this changes by tomorrow uh, when the money starts rolling in. Uh, I mean, we talked about Toronto last night, you know, playing down to their competition. Maybe that's a case here. You know, maybe this is a look at look pass game. You know, for the Jets. Um, you know, one thing that we've been talking about a lot lately is. If we could find a line for the Chicago Blackhawks in the first period, first period of under four shots on goal, <laughs> take it every fucking time. Oh, Their first man. period stats are fucking abysmal. So I actually saw out there, and I know it's early, but I saw out there that uh, the Jets laying a half a point is plus 120 in the first period. I got my eye on that guy. I like him a lot. Yeah, no, that's definitely, and that's how you have to look at these games. These games where the money line bets don't make sense, you got to look at other places where you can make money. And the other one that could be a possible uh, winner is the team totals, right? So the last five games that 
uh, Chicago has played Winnipeg, they've only scored one goal. That's it. One goal in the last five games against uh, against Winnipeg. So, you know, I mean, I don't know what the team total set at right now because the line's not out, but it's probably going to be two and a half. And, you know, it might not be, it might not hurt to sprinkle a little fairy dust on that and hope that this is another 2-1 uh, kind of game, a three-two kind of kind of thing. So it, it'll be interesting to see what that line comes in at. A couple of the player props that I have my eye on. I got Velarde. He's going a three-game point streak right now. He's got eight points in three games. He is red fucking hot. Uh, new new Jet Sean Monahan. He's on a three-game goal streak. He may I he may keep it going here. And I mean, like as far as Chicago goes, I mean we already said it, right? Morazic Mar- needs to get traded before he dies, right? But I mean, this team is Bedard or bust. Um, you know, so, I mean, Felino has had five points in five games. You can find some value in there for the one or two goals that get scored in this fucking game here. Yeah. And I, I, I personally have a tough time taking prop bets, uh, for points <laughs> for Chicago because they just have a, such a hard time scoring goals that, you know, you're basically, you're, you can pretty much say you're one out of 20 <laughs> to get it right because you you might only score one goal and it's very possible that that happens. So I'm personally staying away from the, those prop bets for Chicago unless it's a Bedard, but even then it might even be one and a half uh, points just because of who he is and what the kid's done. Well, Chicago's averaged 26 shots on goal. That fucking sucks. I mean, the Haw- Hawks are just hot garbage, man. Lost 10 of the last 11. But these are, you know, like you say it all the time, man. Not every team loses every fucking game. They're 10 out of 11. They still have that one. So crazier things have happened on a Friday. And you know what? Chicago has been not terrible at home. They're 11 and 15 at home. Like that's almost 500, like compared to their away record where they've only (laughs) won four. Uh, You know, so it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how it pans out. All right, let's take a walk over to Ohio. We got Buffalo coming into Columbus. Buffalo is the slight favorite here at minus 135. Columbus minus one, or I'm sorry, plus 115. I, I mean, you know, five out of five of the last head to head, I'm sorry, the last 10 head to head, seven out of 10 overs have cashed on this team, on these teams. This is kind of a weird fucking matchup, dude. Um, I was looking at, at some of the lines on here. I mean, like, well, first of all, let's start in Buffalo, right? So we both, we all know that Buffalo is a very inconsistent team. This was supposed to be the year that they had turned into a Detroit. Then, you know, just like Ottawa, they were supposed to take a step forward, right? Neither one of them has. But, I mean, they've been on a little bit of a road warrior streak here, winning, you know, six out of seven. Yeah, and it's funny because you, I've, I feel like you said that exact same thing about New Jersey, too. But anyway, uh, <laughs> too soon, too soon. It's, not, no, it's, it's been like an hour. You're fine. You're fine. But yeah, you know what? Buffalo has been great on the road. You know, they've won four of their last five on the road. Uh, and, you know, they they stole one in Montreal. They, they stole one in overtime against Minnesota, San Jose and L.A. So uh, they haven't played a ton on the road uh, because they've had that long, that long five, uh, five at home stand. Uh, but it's it's going to be one of those spots where, you know, who's going to show up for Buffalo tonight? And, you know, we, we've been talking, we've been comparing Buffalo to the Ottawa Senators all year because of the inconsistencies. But they actually, they look like they're starting to get it together a little bit, you know, and they've been getting better goal goaltending from Lukanen. So, and if Buffalo wants to succeed, they definitely need it because they're not that strong defensively. So they need good goaltending. They got the firepower up front when it's going. Tage Thompson's healthy again, and he's been he's been firing on all cylinders. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. But I'm definitely leaning on Buffalo because I think Columbus has won two two games in a row, like once or twice all season. So you really got to factor that in. Once, once. Oh once. God! Can you imagine winning, going on a two-game win streak once in your whole fucking season? My God, that'd be so depressing. Trade me, trade me anywhere. Send me down. Trade I me right play fucking here. now. Yeah, seriously, I'm going to the KHL and going to go play with y- Yager on his uh, Czech team that's ready to fold. <laughs> that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. But yeah, honestly, I, I'm not a big fan of this matchup. 
the over is even at minus 130, which isn't great value, even though these teams seem to just score goals on each other every time they face each other. So this might be one to take a take a little step back and kind of see how the money's rolling in uh, the Vegas line on, uh, you know, the next 24 hours before before puck drops and see where the money's coming in. Well, we always like to sprinkle little props in here as well. I mean, you know, uh, Jeff Skinner got off the schneid. Nine-game goal of streak. That was broken last game. Uh, Johnny Hockey. I know we were talking shit about him the other day, about where the fuck has he been. I mean, maybe he's showing up to save a little face here. I mean, he's got some real good numbers uh, in the last little stretch here. Uh, we actually cashed out on him, uh, Pod, in, in the first episode here, as first time any goal, uh, anytime goal scorer. Um, Johnny's got seven points, uh, in the last Johnny has seven points in his last eight, right? Uh, against Buffalo straight up head to head over the last 18, 18 games. He's got 10 goals, 10 assists. So, I mean, there may be something, something to look at there, you know? Um, but this is also one of these like Friday the 13th fucking kind of matchups, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, we said it before the over is hit seven out of 10 times. Right. But like, listen to these fucking scores. And it's pretty much, it's an odd number, but it's pretty much right down the middle. 7 4, 7 3, 9 4, 5 3, 5 2, and 9 4. It's like every time these guys see each other, only one fucking team shows up and they show up big. It, it's wild to think that one team has scored seven or more goals in four out of their last eight meetings. <laughs> you know, that the over might hit on one, the team total might hit the over. You know, just, it's one of those, one of those matchups where it's just, there's lots of goals. So, you know, maybe at minus 130 on the over, maybe that's a steal of a deal. I personally struggle with it just because I don't, I just don't have faith in either of these teams. And I could see Buffalo putting up some goals. Sure, I could, I could see, you know, like a 5-1 or, a five two kind of win here, but I I just don't know if it's enough to to you know put money on that over. It's a hard thing betting on bad teams. And at the end of the day, that's what these guys really are. They're just two bad fucking teams. Yeah. Well, let's I don't, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We wasted enough time with these shit bags. Let's get to one of the bigger matchups of the night. There's only three games on the schedule for Friday. Uh, Minnesota's walking into Edmonton. Minnesota's plus 160. Edmonton's minus 190 here. Now, I'm going to be that guy right now. I'm going to be that guy, and I'm going to rub some fucking feathers. right? I know it's not me. It's not me ever, right? So outside my character. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> I like Minnesota a lot here, dude. I like them a whole fucking lot. I understand Minnesota has a very mediocre season, right? They're 26, 24, and 6 overall. But under Johnny Hines, they're 21, 14, and 2. You know, and in and, and this matchup, goals get scored. You know, the overs hit six out of six. It's been six, three, and one push. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel it in my plums, brother. What, what do you think about this game? I think you want me to tell you that I think you're retarded, but I'm not going to do that because for once, I actually agree with you. I agree with you that Minnesota is going to compete in this game. Head to head, they're eight and two. They're eight and two against uh, against Edmonton. When I saw that, I'm like, what? Minnesota's won eight out of 10 games against a team like Edmonton? Like Edmonton's been a good team for a long time and Minnesota hasn't been. No. So it's just, it's a weird, a weird stat. And yeah, you're right. There's a lot of goals that get scored and really Edmonton has been struggling a little bit between the pipes. The last four to five games, they got a 4.2 goals against average. Like that's not going to get it done. Luckily they're, they have a good enough team where they can still win games when they give up that kind of, that kind of goals. But that's not going to last forever either. And what was the stat on Mark Andre Fleury against against him? I gave it to you earlier. I thought. I I mean Fleury's looking like he's going to get the net here, right? Uh, he's been five and six in February. He's been a real strong month. He's won six of eight against Edmonton, 
in the last little while. And I mean, yeah. we can go back a hundred years with flurry stats, right? And I think he had 16 wins out of, you know, like 25 meetings or whatever it is, but we'll talk about more relevant stuff. Six of eight against Edmonton. He shows up against the Oilers, man. Definitely. The only real downside is it's in Edmonton. Uh, you know, Edmonton typically plays better at home. I mean, they're 17 and six at, at home compared to a sub 500 record on the road for, for the wild. So it is a, it is a tough one to lay money line on Minnesota, but I'll tell you what, I put money line bets for less money than the puck line is. Okay. So the puck line, a plus one and a half is minus 150. You know, if you're taking Edmonton to win at minus 190, why wouldn't you take Minnesota at minus 150 and you get a goal to play with? So it's an interesting spot here because, you know, if history repeats itself, which it, it's all we have to work with from a capping perspective is, is what's going on, what had happened before, you know, Minnesota could win this game. So the plus one and a half on the puck line at minus 150 is definitely appealing to me. Listen, Edmonton went on their miracle run, right? They went for 16 in a row. Awesome. Great story, guys. So proud of you. Since then, they're 4-3-1. and one. And they just, they, they coughed up a monster lead to Boston. I mean, they showed some grit and they came back and then finally lost it into overtime and shit like that. But, I mean, listen, the Battle of Alberta is right around the corner. That's Saturday night. I think maybe Edmonton could get stuck in a fade spot here maybe looking ahead against calgary i mean that is a it's a it's a national event up there for this shit yeah and we had talked about this once vegas did break that streak i i, I don't know if you remember but i said to you i said look at this is a big time where teams go on these deep runs and they win 10 in a row 12 in a row whatever but then it fades out you know they don't lose one and then win another six or seven they play 500 hockey for a while and you know, it's, I was right. It, it definitely has been showing that for, for Edmonton and they haven't been getting the goaltending that they were in that stretch. And that's a big part of the reason why, like Edmonton should have won that Boston game last night, a hundred percent. And it just didn't happen. Skinner let in a couple soft goals. Edmonton plays catch up the whole game. It just didn't work. You put yourself in a hole and it's tough to fucking get out of it, man. You know? So, I mean, like, you know, shame on them. They, they, they did it to himself. Um, another interesting line here is Connor McJesus is on a 20 game home point streak. Last year, he went 21 games. Um, only six players in NHL history have ever gone over 20 points at home uh, on a streak like that. And all right, I'm just going to leave one more stat for you. And then I'm, I'll walk away in the last 10 games. Minnesota's eight and two. Yeah. Head to head, head to head, eight and two. Just saying. I ain't saying just, but just I'm saying. saying, yeah, just saying. I hear you. I hear you. So we'll see where all that goes. Uh, if you guys want to get in the action and you guys want to find out what we're actually, what our final tickets look like, then you got to get over to why lose cut.com. You already know the deal. We got packages from $49 to two ninety nine for all season long, including the playoffs, including the Stanley cup finals for three ninety nine. Make sure you guys stay connected with us over here on Telegram, YouTube, TikTok, X, Instagram. Links and descriptions are below. One thing for me, Bernsey, from a betting perspective, we're going to just touch on parlays a little bit. Now, every night we release a Canadian bacon parlay where it ranges from two to six, six games on that ticket. Usually once a week, I'll put a big parlay together where it's four, five, pay seven, eight, maybe even nine to one on those we missed it on uh, la, la, the night before last by four one where it, it, yeah four to five for a plus 700 spot so if you want to take if you like taking those those risks and using small positions i would definitely recommend you know getting in the package and, or getting day passes when i advertise that we're putting in the parlay of the weekend just because it's so much upside we don't hit them all the time so you still want to play them relatively small with respect to your bankroll but when we do hit them they hit big so you know take take us take that as you will but if you want in on these parlays you got to get in into a package you heard the buying you heard the man guys get out there get in there get in here with us for less victory i'm mike burns we'll catch you guys later